Hey everyone, it's Mike Hughes from Lord of Minis at Lord of Minis on Instagram. Today, we're going to put some skin in our game. This will be a tutorial on painting skin and skin tones. We'll be using this amazing miniature from Hera Models, and I'm thrilled that they used my body as the reference for this model. It's like I'm looking directly into a mirror right now. So these are the colors we'll be using. We'll be using an AK Grim Brown and an AK Hull Red for our base coat. We'll be using the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, the 71161, with our colors. There they are. Beautiful. Before we get cracking here, I want to just point out what airbrush I use. I use this Iwata Highline HP BH airbrush. Now, this airbrush um, is great at painting very fine detail. People like, I don't know, nail salons use something like this. So, this is perfect to paint miniatures with. The caveat here is you don't need something this advanced. You can very easily use any other airbrush because we're not doing anything besides base coating with this for today. Now, I may be over explaining this process a bit, but I want everyone to understand the ratios involved. For base coating, we'll be filling our cup halfway. Then we'll be adding five drops of each color into the cup, Grim Brown and Hull Red. A good replacement for these colors could be Rhinox Hide from Citadel. However, I like having the Grim Brown around to desaturate the red tones. You remember those brushes you bought that lasted about a week? Well, pull them out because they're great at either sitting around doing nothing or mixing your paint in your airbrush. You'll notice that the skin looks finished. That's because I filmed the entire tutorial only to realize none of it was in focus. The lengths I go to paint muscular death dealers. It's a habit I'm trying to break. Here, we start with light passes. To make sure we cover up our shame properly, we'll do several passes. So here we are. This is the brown color we're going for. This essentially is going to be our shadow color. In other words, the color that will sit on the bottom of his pectoral muscles. Okay, we all have the friend whose wet palette looks like this. It's disgusting. And quite frankly, that friend is no friend of mine. However bad this looks, I assure you, it'll all be fine. Or maybe I'm just trying to convince myself it'll all be fine. Before we get to painting, I just wanted to share what I use for a brush. So I use a Winsor Newton Series 7 Size 1 brush. This brush I pretty much use uh, from start to finish. It has a very nice spring to it. I've used a number of brushes before. Uh, Artis Opus, which I do use from time to time. But this brush I can use and it just won't fail as long as you take care of it. It's a, it's a great brush. So now we have our colors, our Hull Red and Grim Brown mixed. We're going to add our secondary colors in to create kind of a plum, dark plum color. So we're going to apply the first color here across the majority of the muscles. We're just going to leave a slight shadow underneath each section. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint into the crease. You see how it's going 
just up to the top of the crease, but we're not actually painting underneath the muscles. We're leaving, we're gonna leave that sort of base coat dark muted brown as the shadow. And I know that this, this color looks very similar, but it is a little different than the base coat. It's got a little bit more red in it. So again, we're just painting the tops. We're, I would say we're painting about 95% of the muscle area. If we go back to our um, wet palette from hell, uh, we could add some laser magenta and some light brown. We're just going to lighten the color up that we essentially already have. Um, it's going to add a little bit more of an orange tone. We're going to start to get towards some of those uh, um, darker medium uh, skin tones. So you're going to see, we're going to repeat the process that we did from before, but instead of covering the muscles, say 95%, we're going to cover them in maybe 85%. Okay. So we're going to go in the creases again, right in the crease, all the way up to the top of the crease. And we're going to paint the surface area. Again, I would say mm, maybe 80%. And you'll see it's starting to get a bit lighter. We also need to be aware of where the light source is coming from. The light source um, I had imagined for this figure would be coming from the top down just slightly to the right, top down. The other thing that is something that you really want to do is you'll see that the muscles sort of appear compartmentalized, meaning you can see all the individual muscles um, because they're so pronounced. But what we want to do is we want to connect these muscles, right? We, we just like right here, we want to, we want to connect them a little bit. That's going to help make the figure feel like there's some tension between the muscles. And again, we're going up into the crease here. So we're going to mix in some brown rose and some light brown. And you're going to see we're mixing it into the mix we already had. So the mix we already have prior is the basis for the new mix. It's just we're getting a little bit lighter as we move along. I wanted to take a quick break here to show you what I do to prep my brush. I load the brush with paint, usually a mix of paint and water or thinner. Then I take the brush and take some of the paint off of the tip by circling the brush on a paper towel. The result is a needle tip brush that still carries the paint in the thicker part of the brush. So now we have a little bit lighter color. You're really going to see it at this point. And we're just going to hit the tops of the muscles. And again, we're going to go into the crease all the way to the top. 
And what we're doing now with the, the lighter colors is we're, we're not covering as much of the muscle. We're just starting to work these, I would call them mid-tones. I don't think they're exactly highlights yet. And we're covering maybe 50% of the muscle or slightly less. You can see we're going up into the creases there, right up to the top of the crease. And again, we, le we left that shadow of the initial grim brown and hull red under underneath each part of the muscle. That's gonna give us the contrast we need in the end. You can see here I am paint, starting to paint that uh, the big scar and I'm connecting the muscles again, which is really important. The reason for painting that scar um, a little bit lighter is because later on we're going to go over it with a kind of a technical paint. It's going to be a red paint. And we want that red paint to pop as red. If the color is too dark, it just won't, it won't pop as much. The one thing you're going to notice right now is there's going to be more overall paint on larger muscles. And that seems like a very obvious statement, but you're going to have uh, much more light hitting the larger muscles from the light coming from the top down or the slight right top down. Those muscles around the rib cage there on the side were definitely getting highlights in on them but um, the surface area is much much smaller than the larger muscles so we just need to be conscious of that So we are back to our wet palette here, adding brown rose and light brown to create a lighter skin tone. We're adding that to the mix that we already have. And by the way, if you guys and girls have a nickname for this wet palette, shoot it in the comments section. I want to know how to address it when I talk to it. So here we are again with an even lighter color. And again, we're going right into the crease, right, always right up to the top of the crease, right underneath the muscle on top of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm going to try to connect these muscles now with these lighter colors. And now we're starting to kind of see a little bit more contrast. And again, we're going to we're going to paint the scar. And we're going to go again into the crease and connect some of these muscles here. Now 
Right now, what we're looking at is maybe doing 25% of the muscle, not even. We're really starting to get into the highlights now. So we're, the, the surface area that we're painting is not big. Back to our wet palette, we're going to add a little bit more light brown. So at this point, we are well into our highlights. And again, we're going to be painting up into the crease. And this color should add a bit of saturation in the next uh, color phase that we do, the color mix that we do. We're going to desaturate and get even lighter, which will add a little bit of variation in the skin tone. Again, we're connecting, connecting the muscles, always very important.
So now we're adding some faded green and green gray to the mix. We're gonna add maybe a little bit more green gray, the lighter tone. This is gonna desaturate a little bit. It's gonna knock back some of the some of the um, the orange. And so when we go to our miniature now and we put these highlights in, it's just gonna add some variation. And also, I feel like this guy's skin probably isn't going to strictly be a warm color. I think this this is like a death dealer type of character. So I think his skin might get start to get a little gross. Um, but in a good way. So we're going in now with the highlights up into the crease and again connecting connecting the muscles Just want to say you guys have been really patient through this whole process. We're getting towards the end. And I know that uh, this mini has been center screen and then at the bottom sometimes. Sorry for the cropping. But you should get a sense of how to paint him here. So we're just adding some of the final highlights. Get his nipple. And then we'll be on to uh, adding some, some paint to the shadows. So I've added the dark plum from the the Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl to my wet palette. And now I'm going to use a really small amount of airbrush thinner, that, just this much. It's not a lot. And you just, just get the tiniest amount and you'll see how thin that gets. And you can create a very, very nice thin paint, you'll see it's very thin there.
What I want to do with this dark plum, and it's a very thin amount, is just pipe some into the underlying recesses of the, of the rib cage, the sides, more or less where the light's not hitting as much, and it's just to add some variation in color. Now, I would technically, and I might go in outside of this tutorial as I, as I continue to finish this figure, I might go in with an airbrush and pipe some of this color in. But for now, this is what we're gonna do. We'll just sort of, more or less, I guess, I hate the term glazing, but this is kind of more or less glazing some color in. Just a real thin amount for variation. I do this on, on both sides of the model. And mainly, I hit the shadows. But I do put a little bit inside the mid-tones of the muscle. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over that scar with this dark plum. And that's more or less for the darker scar tissue. That's just sort of the discolored scar tissue. So I'm gonna go lightly over that. It's gonna give it a nice variation in color. So I have this sort of a technical paint from Golden, this Alizarin, Alizarin Crimson Hue. It's a translucent paint. Um, and what's great about it is it's a bit glossy. It's, it's a bit runny. It's thin. And it goes on glossy. It's a great analog for things like blood and other sort of effects like scars. You can see how thin it is, but how saturated it is. So going over to the model, you're going to see you can get really, really get a nice fine line of this going over the scar. And it's going to darken that scar on the top. And it's going to give it this sort of gloss, give it this sort of freshly cut look. Pretty cool. This is great for things like getting a little bit of blood on axes, on weapons, splattered all over the walls, however you want to paint. So this concludes the tutorial on how to paint skin and skin tones. Guys, I hope I was helpful. I hope I was helpful. This was my first tutorial ever, and uh, there'll be many more where this came from. And uh, happy painting, everybody. See you next time.